today we'll only be doing the activities, but before that, I want to run through and recap on what we did on Wednesday, because the same concept we learned on Wednesday, we just need to know them today so that we can be able to answer the questions as we go along. And because also on Wednesday, we didn't finish everything, so we will start with the activities that um, we didn't do on Wednesday, on Wednesday and then we move on into the activities for today. So without wasting any time, uh, on Wednesday we learned the basic concepts of the probabilities. We learned about the probability rules, uh, what are your additional rules, your multiplication rule, and also we did the conditional probabilities. So today we're going to continue with conditional probabilities and do more activities from there and also look at the independence rule. <clears throat> so what we learned, we said uh, probabilities or a probability is a chance that some event will happen or not happen. And it's always between zero and one. And we said if, I invent, if an event, we are certain that that event will occur, then it will have a probability of one. Like the sun will come up, it will always be 100% because the sun always comes up and it goes down. The impossible event will be the probability that that event will never happen. That probability of that ha event not happening is equals to zero. <clears throat> And we said also within an event, there are possible outcomes that happens and those possible outcomes, they create what we call an event and also eventually um, all possible outcome, they come from a sample space, which we will define also a little bit later. And we said with events, we can have a simple event, which means only one thing happening at the time um, and we can also have a joint event when two things happen at the same time. Um, uh, reading while eating, that's another. Watching TV while studying, that's another event because watching TV is an event that you're creating to watch and eating is another event that you are creating by eating. Um, a complement event is the other event that is not part of the original one. So it means a complement of A will be any other event that happens that does not include A. And a sample space is a collection of all uh, possible outcomes or possible events that can happen. Um, and we use those two examples of a die because a die has six faces and also the cards has 52 deck of cards. And we also talk about, spoke about how we visualize uh, the events and we said organizing and, and visualizing the events, we can use a decision tree or a, diagram, a, a Venn diagram, or we started with the Venn diagram and we said a, within a Venn diagram, you are able to see your sample space, you are able to see your simple event and also your joint event and your complement events because the complement events will be those events that are not in those simple events that you would have already identified. Then within a decision tree, it's where you can make decisions as you creating events along the way. Then we also spoke about the uh, contingency table, which is just a cross tab that we can use to visualize and be able to calculate the probabilities and we said, Within the event, you are able to calculate your simple event by, by using the totals. And also we can call the marginal probability or where you can calculate your marginal probabilities. And uh, 1,200 will be your sample space and all the events within the table, um, you call those the joint events because there are two things happening main and promoted, they create a joint event, but when the, you are promoted, whether you are a male or a female, it's just a simple event for promotion. Then we set a simple probability we calculate it from. Uh, a simple probability we calculate it from the simple event. And 
we said to calculate it in terms of a formula, we say event satisfying that event, or it's a number of R times that satisfy that event divided by the grand total, which is your X divided by N. And in terms of the example we use to calculate the promoted, we said it will be 324 divided by 1,200. That will give us the probability of a simple event for promote, promoted. Then we also discussed the joint event, and we said joint event, we calculated using the joint uh, sorry, joint probability we calculated using the joint event. And also it's event satisfying or the number of outcomes satisfying that event, which is the joint event divided by the grand total, which is your sample space. And we looked at calculating the probability of a joint event between men and being promoted. So we wanted to know the probability of men who are promoted, which were 288 divided by 1,200, that gives us 0 0.24. Those are your joint probability for men and promoted. Then we also spoke about marginal probabilities. And we said with marginal probabilities are the same as your simple event, but in this instance, you will use the joint events to calculate the marginal probability. So, for example, calculating the probability of A, we'll use the joint event of A and B1 plus uh, the probability of event A and B2 plus the probability of event B, um, A and B up until BK. And that is how you calculate your marginal probability when you are given the joint event. Otherwise, if you're calculating it uh, using the totals, you will be calculating your simple event easier because then simple event is just the sum of all the joint events which is the total so we looked at an example of calculating that if we want to calculate the uh, probability of being promoted then it means if we do not have the total then we just add pro uh, probability of men and promoted which is 288 plus women and pro uh, women promoted which is 36 so it will be 288 plus 36 divided by 1,200, which will give us a 0 0.27, which are the marginal probability. And if we had the total, we could have just used 324 divided by 1,200 would give us the same answer. So that's how marginal probabilities work. Then we also spoke about other rules that you might have when you work with probabilities like mutually exclusive events. And we said mutually exclusive events are events that can happen at the same time or simultaneously. And <clears throat> we looked at uh, event, uh, oh sorry, mutually exclusive events are events that cannot happen at the same time. If events cannot happen at the same time, then they are mutually exclusive events. And we said for mutually exclusive events, the probability of those events. So if we're looking at A and B, the probability of these two events will be the probability of A and B will be equals to zero. And remember I said, we can use the symbol N uh, intersect, or we can write it as the probability of A and B is equals to zero. They mean one and the same thing, intersect. Or end. <clears throat> then we also spoke about, uh, I just want to check if the videos are recording. Uh, um, you are recording, okay, so it is recorded. So we also spoke about the collectively exhaustive events. We said the collectively exhaustive events are events that makes up all the events that are in the sample space. And <clears throat> they need to cover the entire sample space. And with that, we said, uh, if we're looking at this um, example where we have A, B, C, and D events, we said um, all of them combined, they, make, they are collectively exhaustive, but they are not mutually exclusive because A can also occur in C, so it's um, not mutually exclusive, or B can occur in C, or it can also occur in D. They are not mutually exclusive. But 
A and, C, A and B on their own, they are collectively exhaustive events on their own, A and B, because they make up all the days within 2014. And they are also mutually exclusive because a day on a weekday cannot be a day on a weekend. Um, then we, or we defined the, the contingency table. I'm not going to dwell too much on this because we know that the year we calculate this on the total, we calculate simple probability within the table. We calculate the joint probability from those simple. And we know that the sum of all the values or the probability should be equals to one. And this was just to recap on what we, we, we spoke about. We said all probabilities needs to be between zero and one. If you get a value outside of zero, which is minus, or you get a value that is bigger than one, it means you did something wrong with your calculation for the probability. Probabilities should just be between zero and one. And we said also a probability, we can represent it in terms of the decimal, but we can represent it in terms of the proportion, which is a percentage format, which then we take that uh, relative frequency and multiply it by 100 to get it to a percentage. It will be one and the same. So zero will be 0% and one will be 100%. Otherwise, this is zero and this is one. Or if it's 50%, then it will be 0, 0,5. And we said also the sum of all probabilities is equals to one. And if that is the case, then a complement event, if we need to find the probability of an A or a probability of a complement event, it will be one minus the probability of an other event. Um, since the sum of all probabilities are equals to one. And we looked at this example for the uh, conditional probability because here yeah, they wanted to find the probability of not not rain and we know that that will be one minus the probability of rain and we said that is one minus 0, 0,7 and that is 0, 0,3 and that's how you calculate your complement event. Then we also moved on and looked at the addition rule which is the probability of something or another happening. So we looked at whether a probability of A or B happening, and that will be given by the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B minus the probability of a joint probability. And remember this A and B, it does not mean you're going to take A and B and then add the probability of B. It does not mean that. That is a joint probability, which is not the same as A, which is not the same as B. It's the joint probability of A and B. And we said also, if and only if event A and B are mutually exclusive, then the probability of A and B, which is that probability, will be equals to zero. And then when that is equals to zero, then the probability of A or B will be equals to the probability of A plus B. And this is only if and only if event A and B are mutually exclusive. If those two events are mutually exclusive, then the probability of A or B will be equals to the probability of A plus the probability of B. We also went on and looked at this activity. I'm just going to skip through it. Um, and then we looked at conditional probability and we said a conditional probability is the probability of one event happening given that another event has already occurred or has already happened. And that is given by the probability of A given B. It's given by the probability of A and B happening divided by the probability of B. We always divide by the probability of the given. Or alternatively, we can swap them around and find the probability of B given A already occurred, and that will be the probability of the joint event between A and B divided by the probability of A. And that is conditional probabilities. We looked at this and we also looked at an example and we said sometimes if they give you 
the probabilities themselves because previously we were working with events. You remember that events are whole numbers like 5, 10, 15, 20, 100. When you add them, they will not give you a decimal, but they give you, a, um, sorry, when you add them, all of them together, they should be equals to 1. Whereas with events, they are like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. When you add them, they give you a bigger number. It's just events. So probabilities or proportions, like in this instance, they give us the proportions of 27% have been promoted, 80% have are men. So it means they already calculated those probabilities. All you just need to know is how to place them in order for you to answer some of the questions that you are given. So for example, when they say is 27% have been promoted, then it means regardless of whether they are men or women, so it, we will put it under the total because it is all of them who were promoted with 27% of those. And 80% are men, so it, regardless of whether those people are promoted or not, as long as they are men, 80% of them were men, we put it under men. And 24% are both men and promoted, so then it means that these are joint probabilities of men and promoted, therefore we put it on there. And remembering about probabilities, knowing that the sum of all probabilities is equals to one, therefore it means the grand total or your sample space will be equals to, the probability of a sample space will be equals to one, and then I can complete the entire table. I can find the value for promoted, for not promoted, I can find the value for women, I can find the value of not promoted, uh, uh, women promoted and men not promoted because to get this value I just subtract uh, 0 0.27 minus 0 0.24 will give me men, uh, women and 1 minus 0 0.27 will give me not promoted so we just do those subtractions of the values and then the whole table is complete and then you are able to answer all the other questions. Um, that follows. So if we wanted to calculate the probability of A given B, but in this instance we want to calculate the probability of men given that they have been promoted, so we need to calculate the probability of men given that they have been promoted, therefore we're going to use the probability of A and B which is the joint probability, so we're going to use the joint probability of men promoted and dividing by the probability of a given, which is the probability of B. So we're going to find the probability of B in this instance is promoted, therefore we're going to find the probability of promoted. So we're going to take the probability of men and promoted, which is 0, 0,24 divided by the probability of promoted, which is 0, 0,27 and divide each other and then we get 0, 0,89 and that is conditional probabilities and you can calculate the other conditional probabilities. Now we also spoke about the multiplication rule and we said the multiplication rule calculate all comes from the conditional probability and this is if you are given the probability of A given B and the probability of B and they're asking you to find the probability of A and B, which is the joint probability. Then it means you need to apply the conditional probability because we know that the probability of A given B, if they give you that, and they ask you to find the probability of A and B, and this is what you are not given, not given. So you need to calculate that, but they give you the probability of B, Therefore, we can find the probability of A and B by just saying the probability of A given B times, oh sorry, times the probability of B by removing the probability of B this side. When we bring it to the right hand or to the left hand side, we're going to multiply and this side we will be left with the probability of A and B. And that is the multiplication rule. So, uh, and that gives you the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A given B divided by, or multiplied by the probability of B. 
and if I take the probability of B underneath the probability or divided by the probability of A and B, you will see that we end up with the conditional probability. However, if, if, if in the question they say event A and B are independent, only if A and B are independent, then the probability of A given B will be given by the probability of A. If and only if event A and B are independent, then the conditional probability of A given B will be given by the probability of A, because then it means B does not have any bearing on what's happening or what happens to A. So then that, those will be equal. And if so, then the probability of A and B will be given by the probability of A, because then the given gets replaced by the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. This only occurs if and only if A and B are independent. So if in the question they're asking you to calculate the probability of A and B and they gave you the contingency table and they never said anything about A and B being independent, you must remember that this is X divided by N. Number satisfying the joint event divided by n. But in case they say a and b are independent, then the joint probability of a and b will be given by the probability of a multiplied by the probability of b only for independent event. Let's look at this example. If probability of B is equals to 0, 0,2 and the probability of A complement is 0, 0,7 and the probability of A given B is 0, 0,9. Find the probability of B given A. At some point, some people might say, oh, it's easy. This is the probability of B given A and this is the probability of A given B. Maybe we can swap this around and say it's the same thing. It's not. Finding the probability of B given A is given by the probability of A and B divided by the probability of A. Now, if those are the things that we need to answer this question, we need to go back to our statement and ask ourselves questions. What is it that we are given here? We are given the probability of A and B? No, we are not. We do not have that. Are we given the probability of A? No, we do not have that. But we are given that probability. So it's easy for us to find the probability of A because the probability of A is one minus the probability of A complement. And since that is the probability of A complement is 0, 0,7, therefore this will be 0, 0,3. So I have that answer. But I do not have the probability of A and B and I cannot use, they never told me here that A and B are independent. So it means probability of A and B should be equals to X divided by N. That's what I need to use, but I'm not given any X. However, I am given this probability. So I'm given the probability of A given B. I know that that is equals to 0 0.9, but it does not help me at this point because if I'm given the probability of A given B, I can write the formula as said, this 0 0.9, they found it by using A and B divided by the probability of the given, which is B. So since they found it using this formula, I can then come back and say, do I have the probability of B? Yes, I do have. Do I have the probability of A given B? Yes, I have. So I can substitute the values. Substituting 0 0.9 is equals to the probability of A and B divided by 
I have the probability of B, which is 0, 0,2, 0, 0,2. Then I can use my multiplication rule because this is 0, 0,2 multiplied by 0, 0.9 multiplied by 0, 0.2 is equal to the probability of A and B. And therefore, my probability of A and B will be equals to 0.9 multiplied by 0.2, which is 0, 0,18. 0, 0,18. So I have now my probability of A and B. So I can go back to my formula. I know that I needed to find the probability of B given A, which is equals to the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. Finding this easy now. I have my probability of A and B, which is 0, 0,18, divided by my probability of B, which is 0, 0,2, and that gives me 0, 0,8, Divide by 0.2, which gives me 0, 0,9. And that's how you find the probability of A given B. Or B given A. Sorry, man. If I can just quickly ask. Um, is it not divided by the probability of A? Oh, divided by the probability of A. Yes, yeah, sorry, you are right. I divided wrong there. Sorry is divided by the probability of A, and we did find the probability of A is 0, 0,3. So thank you very much for picking that one up. So it's 0 0.18 divided by 0 0.3. Yes, you're right. It's 0 0.6. Thank you. And that's how you will find that you oh, sorry because I, I had a couple of questions. And that it will be how you answer that question. So remember all these values that you have. So we'll go to the next section and do the independence. So two events are independent if and only if. And when do we use this? Sometimes in the question they will give you statements and ask you to verify whether the statements are correct or incorrect, and they say even A and B are independent. You need to remember these formulas. You need to remember this to say, how do I test that even A and even B are independent? You can only test them by applying this, the probability of a conditional probability of A given B is equals to the probability of A. So if the conditional probability of A given B is equals to the probability of A, then it means your two events are independent. Or if the probability of B given A is equals to the probability of B, then those two events are independent. So you will use this formula to test whether they are independent or not. You will use um, this formula if and only if when you calculate the conditional probability and you are using the multiplication rule and they told you that event a and b are independent then you use the conditional probability you will say the uh, the probability of a and b is equal to the probability of a times the probability of b because of event a and b being independent but you can also use these two equations to test the independence of event A and B. Okay, so let's look at this example. We calculated all the values, so we know that the probability of A is 0 0.3. We know that the probability of A and B is 0 0.18, and we know that the probability of B given A is equals to 0 0.6. That we know now. Question number one, it says, are event A and B independent? So you need to go back and think about 
right how do i answer this question we can answer it two ways or one way or, or once we can say if we look at the probability of b given a is it equals to the probability of a or you can say probability of a given b is it equals to the probability of b if they are equal oh sorry i'm doing it all wrong must be the other way because for independence irregardless of whether a has a, a was given has no bearing on b i had it all right the whole time and then i changed it so this is b and this is a so sorry my bad so for independence the probability of b given a should be equal to the probability of b or the probability of A given B should be equal to the probability of A. So we already have the answers here. So we can just check. We can check the first one. What is the probability of B given A? The probability of B given A is 0, 0,6. Is it equal to the probability of B? What is my probability of B is 0, 0,2. Are they equal? They are not. And then that is your answer. Even A and B are not independent because the probability of B given A is not equal to the probability of B. You can do the same with the probability of A given B because you don't have in the exam, you don't have to do two of them. You can choose one of them. Um, so, but you will get the same answer. So let's say with this one, we say, the probability of A given B, so we know that that is 0, 0,9. It needs to be equals to the probability of A, and our probability of A is 0 0.3. 0 0.3. They are not equal, therefore it means the two events are not independent. Not independent. Are event A and B independent? No, that is the answer. No, they are not independent. Are event A and B mutually exclusive? How do I know that they are mutually exclusive? Probability of A and B should be equals to zero. Is the probability of A and B equals to zero? The probability of A and from my answers, the probability of A and B is not equals to zero because it is equals to, oh sorry, we can say it is equals to 0, 0,18, therefore it is not equals to zero, therefore no, it's not mutually exclusive. And that is how you test whether statements that you are given are mutually exclusive or they are independent by using the formulas that you know. Okay. And that concludes what we were supposed to cover on Saturday. And with that, we can move on into the activities for today. Any question? Any questions? Speak now. When we do the activities, I will give you all the formulas because I will understand that at this point you are not familiar with all the formulas, so I will give you the formulas, but you need to do the, uh, you need to work things out as well. And sometimes I will not give you all the formulas, so you will need to derive some of the formulas from the word, like the multiplication rule. So I'll just give you the conditional probability formula and you will need to do the other. For example, the uh, additional rule, where we look at the probability of A or B. If events are mutually exclusive, I'm not going to give you uh, the mutually exclusive event probability formula. I will only give you one. So you need to make up your mind and know all your probability concepts so that you, you know that for mutually exclusive, you have to drop the A uh, probability of A or and B. OK, so if there are no questions with that regard, then let us go into activities. Um, I just want to share.
my screen, not the... Okay. So, are we ready? We're going to start. Okay. Exercise number one. Autism South Africa collected the following information on specialist consulting with children living with autism, ASD. The table below shows the number of boys and girls consulting different specialists. What is the probability that at a random chosen or that a randomly chosen child who consulted a neuropsychologist is a boy, which means calculate the probability of neuropsychologist and a boy. So we're given a table. Before we even start answering the question, let's first complete the entire table. So first calculate all the values that are given. So I'm only going to do this one activity with you once and then I expect you to do. Uh, there will be questions relating to the same table going forward. So we're going to use the same table again and again and again and again and again so that you get used to the activities. So 90 plus 30 It's 120. So you can do the calculations with me and answer the, the questions. 45 plus 15. Oh, sorry. It's 60. Yes. 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 So you need to write this table somewhere because you're going to use it in all the activities and it looks like this. It's not completed for all the questions as well. So you need to quickly write this table somewhere with all the values completed because when I move to the next slide, the values that we are putting here will disappear. Um, and then now uh, I can calculate this value here as well which is 55 by saying 55 minus those two values minus 30 minus 15. It's 10. Because if I add all of them it should give me 55 because that is the total and that's 10 and then 30 plus 10 is 40. I can also add all the values um since they didn't tell us how many they are, so it's 120 plus 60 plus 40 equals to 220. And this also, we can add them, or I can just say 220 minus 55, or I could say 90 plus 45 plus 30 should give me the same answer, which is 165. Even if I say 220, Minus 55, I should get 165. So, do you have the table? Remember you Not did yet. It? Okay. Not yet. Yes. Now, we can go and answer this question. Remember the question we were asked was calculate the probability that a boy and neuropsychologist or neuropsychologist and a boy. So there is neuropsychologist and there is the boy. So we know that the probability of A, the formula that we know is the probability of A and B is equals to X divided by N. Number satisfying the joint event divided by N.
Are we done? Should be quick. Yes, we can. Okay. So what will be the probability? And boy. Number satisfying the event. Uh, neuropsychologist then a boy is. 45 divided by the total, which is 220. Then your answer will is 0, 205. 0,2. Zero five, which means our correct answer is option five. That was easy. Um, remember, we can also use the chat to post. So let me see. I didn't open my chat function. I'm sorry about that. That is why I didn't know whether you guys have answered the question or not. Remember, let's use the chat function as well while we're busy with the activities. Okay, next, second question. Like I said, we're going to be using the same table, so you need to have complete, you have the table in front of you to answer the following question. The probability that NP or a boy, we know that the probability of A or B is equals to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B, not all. So you can also do the same with your probability of NP Oh boy, you can complete the equation. Fiso has answered. Others, do you agree with what he has? You can like his answer or post a new other answer that is different from his.
Are you done? Are you lost? Talk to me. Hello. Lost. So let me give you the formula. If you look at this formula that I gave you, because you will get the same formulas in, in your exams as well. And these are the formulas that you need to familiarize yourself. So take the same question and rewrite it the same way as you see this. So we we, we know that A or B and I, get, I wrote it here. So if I rewrite it as N, P or B, I know that I need to write the probability of A, so which means is the probability of the first one, which is NP, so it will be the probability of NP, irregardless of whether it's a boy or a girl, plus the probability of B, because there is OB, so here I also have a B, so it will be plus the probability of a boy, minus the joint probability of A and B, minus the probability of N, P, N, a boy, <clears throat> and a boy. So I know this is a joint probability. This is simple probability, simple probability. So because here we are given events, always remember event, the probability of A will always be given by X divided by N, which is the Observation satisfying that event divided by how many there are. For a joint event, probability of A and B always is going to be given by the event satisfying the joint event divided by the total sample space. So what is the probability of neuropsychologist? How many events satisfy neuropsychologist? 45. Nope. 60. It's 60, and we also divide by the total sample space, which is 220. Yes. Plus, we also have a simple event here. How many are boys? 165. It will be 165 divided by 220. Minus the joint event of Close neuropsychology five. and a boy will be 45 over 220. Then for this, we can write it as 60 plus 165 minus 45 divided by 220. And when you calculate that, what do you get? 60 plus 165. 165 is 225 minus 45. You get 180 divided by 220. The answer you get is 0.8181818181. Which then it means the answer is 2. Those who were lost, okay. she got it. She no way she made a mistake. So guys, when I give you an activity and you feel that you don't know how to answer the question, don't wait until I ask, just ask. Say I am lost, repeat, help me, just ask. Um, Let's look at the next example or oh, exercise. Same question. What is the probability that a randomly chosen child is a boy given that he has consulted a neuropsychologist? The formula that we know about conditional probability because we are told given 
So we know that the probability of A given B is equals to the probability of A and B divided by the probability of the given, which is the probability of B. So knowing this formula, try and rewrite your formula based on this. The probability of A, probability of a boy, given B, which is neuropsychologist, and then complete the whole equation. The probability of a boy given they visited a neuropsychologist or they consulted with the neuropsychologist. And remember also the probability of A and B is given by X divided by N. The um. probability of B is given by event satisfying the event divided by that. So you need to always remember that, that you always need to divide by your N. And I think for those who never did met at high school um, and you've le never learned about divisions, because you will get two fractions, one for the probability of A and B because it's S divided by N, divided by the probability of B, which is X divided by N. So you will have two fractions. So you need to always remember for a, a division, we say KCF. Keep the first fraction, change the sign to a multiplication, and flip the second fraction. So if I have 3 divided by 4 divided by 5 divided by 8, those are two fractions. KCF says I must keep the first, which is 3 divided by 4, I must change my division to a multiplication and then I must flip. So the value that is at the bottom must come to the top and the value at the top must come to the bottom. So then it means it's eight divided by five. And that is what you're going to do when you answer this question. And with multiplication, we know that we can simplify already or we can multiply what is at the top with what is at the top and multiply the bottom with the bottom and then find the answer. So you're going to get that. And that is the only hint I can give you right now, especially for those who, for the first time. Uh, I'm sorry. Are we happy now?
Uh, Fiso has posted and Lungile has posted. I'm not sure if Lungile is posting the previous or is it for this one? But anyway, we have two answers. Let's see, we have two answers. Tarabo also posted the same as Fiso. Are we happy? Okay, let's answer the question. The probability of B given B given N is given by, or B given NP will be given by the joint probability of both, which is the probability of boy and neuropsychologist divide by the probability of neuropsychologist. Now, the joint probability for neuro boy and neuropsychologist is 45 divided by 220. 45. I don't know what my pen is writing right now. 45 divided by 220 divide by because I need to remember that there is a division. The probability of neuropsychologist, irregardless, is 60 divide by 220. Applying the KCF methodology, we keep 45 divided by 220. We change the sign from a division to a multiplication. We flip. 220 comes to the top and 60 comes to the bottom. In terms of math, we can simplify. In terms of math, we can simplify. 220 can cancel out. And then we are left with 45. So because this will be one there and one there. So 45 times one will be 45 divided by one times 60 is 60, which then gives us 45 divided by 60 is 0, 0,75. And if I look at that, that will be number three, as Fiso and Garabu got it. Happiness? Are we happy? Um, Miss Liz? Yes. So when you calculate this, do you say, um, because it says boy given, Neuro, is that how you write it? Then that's how you will calculate it. If it's swapped around, it means you're looking for the boy instead of um, the neuro ecologist. So if the question was, is the boy consulted a neuropsychologist given that he's a boy? So a child consulted a neuropsychologist given that he's a boy, then you will start with neuropsychologist on this side and then a boy as a given. So this given tells you where to put the line. So this site is the boy and that site is neuropsychologist. Sometimes they might not ask the question in that manner. They might say, what is the probability that a chosen child, given that he consulted a neuropsychologist, is a boy? So you must read your questions carefully. Given that he consulted a neuropsychologist and is a boy, you will need to know that the given part goes with the neuropsychologist. So you must read it carefully. Okay, so moving on to more exercise. Same. Now we have different statements that we need to verify if those questions are Correct. So we're going to work together now. 
uh, you you must unmute your mics because we need to go statement by statement by statement by statement by statement so that you know how to answer this question. And if you know the formula by now, when we answer the question, I want you to tell me what the formula looks like and then how do we calculate it? Don't take shortcuts. Don't give me, yes, this is correct. That is incorrect. I want to make sure that you practice as much as possible so that you know how to answer the questions, even if we're not looking at the same question. OK, so completing the whole table again, 120, 60, 40, and 220, and 10, and 165. So now, number one, how do we answer this? We're looking for the incorrect statement. Probability of a boy? Is X divided by N, that is 165 divided by one, uh, 220, and it's 175. And is it the same? Is it correct? Yes, it's 0 0.75. Therefore, this is correct. Moving on to the next one. The probability of boy or a girl. I will write the formula, which is the probability of boy plus the probability of girl minus the probability of boy and girl. So how do we find the probability of a boy? It's 165, the total for boys. Okay, it will be 165 divided by 220. Probability of a girl? 55 divided by 220. Minus. Joint probability of a girl and a boy? Zero. Which will be zero. Because a boy and a girl cannot happen at the same time, therefore they are mutually at the same time. Yes. So calculating the probability of a boy and a girl. Boy it's or one. Girl, it's equals to one because 165 plus 55 is 220 divided by 220 will give us a one. So therefore it means mm -hmm. that is correct. Calculate the probability of a girl or speech therapist. So here we need to find the probability of a girl plus the probability of speech therapist minus the joint probability. Probability of a girl and speech therapist. And that will be given by, let's, let me remove this. I'm going to use the same formula. That is given by girl speech therapist and girl and speech therapist. What is the probability of a girl? How do we calculate it? 55 over 55. Probability of speech therapist. 120. 120. 220. Probability of girl and speech therapist. 30 over 220. And calculate that. Thank you. 
What is the answer? It's zero point six five nine. I also put the same. Pardon? Zero point six five nine. Therefore, that is the incorrect one. Calculate the probability of speech therapist. It's one twenty divided by uh, two twenty and it's the same. It's correct. So that is correct. Calculate the probability of speech therapist or neuropsychologist, which is given by the probability of speech therapist plus the probability of neuropsychologist minus the probability of speech therapist and <laughs> neuropsychologist. And this side would be zero because they cannot happen at the same time. As long as they fall within the same category, they can never happen at the same time. So they, they are mutually exclusive. The speech therapist, we already calculated it before and we found that it's zero comma five four five sorry mm -hmm. for the speech therapist and for the neuropsychologist we calculated it so many times before it's zero point two seven two zero comma two it's forty five divide Sorry, neuropsychologist is 60. So it's 60 divided by 220, which is 0, 0,27. 0, 273. So it is 0. 0.545 plus. 0.273 gives you 0, 0,818181 is that 0.81 next which one of the following statement is incorrect so you need to do the probability of Speech therapist and a boy. Because his joint probability is just X over N. Sorry, before you continue. Mm -hmm. Please fill the contingency table. Sorry, mine is on another page now. Ha! <laughs> Sorry. I, I told you to write this somewhere. We're going to use it so often. <sighs> okay. 10 and 165. Okay. Thank you. Here's the table. Okay. So now let's answer the question. ST and a boy. It's 90 divided by 220. 90 divided by 220. Do we get the same? Yes. Yes. Correct. Probability of a girl and a, a P psychiatrist and a girl. Yeah. 10 divided by 220. Yes. Do we get the same? Yes. 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 
Now we go into the probability of given. So we need to go and find the probability of ST given boy, which is the probability of ST and a boy divided by the probability of a boy. So you can go and calculate the probability of ST and a boy. We already have that. We said that is correct. You can Please. go and calculate the probability of a boy. So calculate the probability of a boy, which is 160 divided by 220. Isn't it 165? Oh, 165, yes. 165 divided by 220. 0 0.75. 0 0.75. We had this somewhere. We didn't even have to do that. So since I have the probabilities, I can just use the probabilities. So the probabilities, 0, comma. 409 divided by 0, 0,75. And that should give me the probability of ST and a boy. It's 0 0.545. Which is correct. Now calculate the probability of NP and a girl given. NP given that is a girl, which is oh, yeah. NP and a girl and the probability of a girl. So it means we need to go and find the probability of a girl. It's um, 15 divided by 220. 55. Is it now 55? 55 divided by 220. Which is 0, 0,25. Yes. We need probability of NP, so you can go and find the probability of NP and a girl. And that is 15 divided 15, by 20. 20 um, it's 0 0.068. Which is 0 0.0. 6, 6, 8. Now we can substitute the probabilities onto here, and that will give 0 0.068 divided by the probability of a girl, which is 0 0.25. 0 0.25. And the answer is 0 0.273. Zero point two seven three, and that is not the right answer. It gives us the probability of neuropsychologist and a girl. We can do the last one. Now, with the last one, they're asking us to check whether the probability of a boy, uh, probability of neuropsychologist, given that is a boy, 
Is it the same as the probability of neuropsychologists, given that it's a girl? And is it the same as the probability of neuropsychologists? So we did find the probability of a girl, and we said is, oh, now I removed that. We said is point, it's, we said it's 0 0.273. Did we calculate the probability of neuropsychologists? We did calculate that. And we found that it was. Zero point two seven three. Zero point two seven three. Did we calculate the probability of neuro. Psychologist and a boy, given that is a boy, we didn't calculate that unless yes. we did calculate it previously. Nope, we didn't. So we need to calculate that the probability of neuro psychologist, given that is a boy. We calculated the probability of a boy given neuropsychologist, not the probability of neuropsychologist given that is a boy. So that is the probability of neuro and a boy divide by the probability of a boy so we can go and calculate the probability of neuropsychologist and a boy which is 45 divided by which is 0, 0, 0,205. Divide by the probability of a boy, we did calculate it earlier, which is 165 divided by 220. We found that was 0, 0,75. Mm -hmm. The answer is 0.273. The answer is 0 0.273. Therefore, it means they are equal. So it is correct. Mm -hmm. And that's how you will determine whether the, the statement is correct or incorrect. So we know that 4 was the incorrect one. Happiness. Um, you can take two minutes. Uh, Three minutes break. I need to go and get water. Uh, those who wants to continue working, I'm going to go to the next question. Uh, you can work it out and see if you are able to make sense out of it. And then we'll come back and discuss it just now. Take the three minutes break and then we'll do this.
Okay. Are you all back? Hello. Did I mute myself? Okay, you can hear. No, we're back. Okay, so one of the questions was asked on Wednesday was around how many questions are like calculations and how many are like theory. So with, with probabilities, actually, there are not so much in terms of theory. You just need to know certain concepts as well um, and answer them. So like this is one of the example where I, I might say theory here comes into play because but you will still also need to do some little bit of calculations because they're asking you to test whether things are independent or are they mutually exclusive. So like we did with the activity when we were finishing off with the recapping, uh, we looked at two questions where we needed to look at that. So when it comes to this basic psychology, uh, basic probability as well. So sometimes the questions they might ask you in this format, like already in uh, a formula for format with the answers. Sometimes they might ask you in a sentence format and you need to make sense out of those sentences in order for you to answer the, sorry, the question. So <clears throat> yeah, Using the same information, we need to find which one of these statements is correct or is incorrect. So, remember, for independence, we use the conditional probability. We need to test whether the conditional probability of B, remember that, we need to test the conditional probability of A given B, whether it's the same as the probability of A in this instance. So looking at these three statements, the first one says independent, independent, and this one says dependent. So if they are not equal, then we say they are dependent on each other. But if they are equal, then we say they are independent. So let's check these three statements. <clears throat> so we already, we did calculate previously. Remember the, the answers, some of them are here. We calculated the probability of neuropsychology and a boy, given that it's a boy, and calculated neuropsychology given that it's a girl, things like that. So these questions as well, they will be asking those. So they're asking if neuropsychology and a boy are independent. So therefore, here they're asking us if the probability, regardless of how you write it, because they just want to know if event A and B are independent. So here we can say the probability of neuropsychologist, given that is a boy, we want to test if this is equals to the probability of neuropsychologist. That's all what we want to do with line number one. So if we go back to the question that we answered previously, because we already have the answers, we don't have to go back and repeat all of them. So we know that the probability, probability of neuropsychologist, given that is a boy, we said it's, it's zero zero equal point to zero point. Zero no, it's 0 0.273. And the probability of neuropsychology is given that is a girl is given by 0, 0.273. That's what we did there. Remember this one was wrong. Uh, and then we also find that the probability of 
neuropsychologist. He said it is 0, 0,273. We already calculated all these values as well. So I'm just going to go to the question and answer that. So the first one, neuropsychology and a boy, we said it is 0, 0,273. Remember that? 273. Probability of neuropsychologist, 0, 0,273. They are equal. Therefore, that is the correct statement. The next question is asking event neuropsychology and a girl are independent. So we do the same. We can do the same with the next one. So we need to find that the probability of neuropsychologist given that is a girl should be giving us the probability of neuro Psychologist, they should be equal. We did the calculations. The probability neuropsychologist, given that is a girl, we found that is equals to 0, 0,273. And we said the probability of neuropsychologist is to 0, 0,273. And that's what we did in the previous. So we am lost. We did calculate them here. Neuropsychologist, given that is a girl, we said it's the same as that. So we are just validating the question here. So it's independent. Do you want to ask a question? Yes, I'm lost. Why are you lost? Where are you lost? <laughs> I'm lost. Uh, yeah, I'm lost. I'm getting the, the, the same Village of <laughs> neuropsychologist, given okay, the board. With me. Let's go back to this question that we did previously. Remember, we did this question. It's 45 over 220. Yes, no. it's not 0, 0,273. We calculated the probability, not end. You must remember, this is not end. It's the given. We calculated that. Oh, remember, we yes. Did this question. Yes, yes. We did this. So we said it's correct here yeah, because we calculated the probability of neuropsychologist given that is a boy. We said it's 0, 0,273. I'm fine now. We calculated this neuropsychologist given that is a girl. We said it is this. If we didn't calculate all these values, we could be calculating them again using the formula there. We could have been doing this. But we already have the answers from the previous question that we answered. So we're using those answers to validate some of these statements. And that's all what I'm doing right now. So we have that neuropsychologist is the same as uh, neuropsychologist given that is a boy. They are equal, so therefore that statement is correct. And also the second statement is correct because neuropsychologist is the same as the neuropsychologist given that is a girl. They give us the same. Now, the third statement, it says event psychiatrist and a boy are dependent. So therefore they are saying to us in this, we need to test that the probability of psychiatrist, which is P, Given that the boy is the same as the prob is not the same as the probability of a psychiatrist. So since we didn't calculate any of these values, we need to go and calculate them. So let me just double check. We calculated probability of ST, ST. So I'm just gonna go back. So we never calculated psychiatrist on its own. So let's let's go ahead and do this calculation. So the first one, I'm going to remove all this because we don't need them anymore now. We're done with them. So we're going to start with the first side, which is the probability of psychiatrist given that is a boy. It's given by the probability of psychiatrist and a boy divide by the probability of a boy. So we know what the probability of a boy is, it's 0, 0.75, but we don't know what the probability of psychi psychiatrist 
is. So this is 0 0.75 from the previous exercises that we did. We did calculate the probability of a boy as 0 0.75. Now let's calculate the probability of a psychiatrist and a boy. We did calculate that. So I don't have to go. Uh, no, we didn't. We did and a girl. So we need to calculate psychiatrist and a boy. So which is P and a B, which is 30. So the probability of P and a B is 30 divided by 220, which is 30 divided by 220. Do you get the same? 0, 0,1. Three six. Yes. Yeah, yes. Zero comma one three six. So now divide that. Divide by zero comma seven five. What do you get? Zero comma one eight one. Do you get that? Zero comma one eight two. So zero comma one eight. Uh, I'm getting one eight two. Okay. So now I know what this probability of the probability of B given uh, P given B is. I need to find the probability of P. So the probability of P is given by X divided by N, which the probability of P is 40. So it will be 40 divided by 220. And what do you get? 0, 0,181. Do you get that? Or which is 82? 0, 0,182. Do you also get the same? Yes. Therefore, it is. so 0, 0,182 is equals to 0, 0,182. Therefore, it means they are not dependent, but they are independent independent so then this is incorrect so you just need to check the statement so if they are equal they should be independent if they are not equal then they will be dependent so because they are equal then they are independent not dependent statement number four says but ASD is more common in boys than in girls. So this is just a st general statement. So remember, these are the uh, number of uh, boys and girls that consulted, but they have ASD. So with this, it says it's more common in boys than in girls. Therefore, it means boys, they should be more boys than girls. So if I look at this, there are more boys. So yes, that is correct. So we know that the first one was also correct. The last one it says the speech therapist and psychiatrist are mutually exclusive. Speech therapist and psychiatrist, if they are in the same category, they cannot happen at the same time. Therefore, this is correct because they are in the same category. So they are mutually exclusive, which is correct, right? And that's how you validate the statements. So you will have to go through each and every one of them. Do some calculations if you have to. Or, or use the knowledge that you know in order to make that decision. Like with the last statement. Any question? Then we move to the next exercise. Exercise 7 states, 
Let X represent an event that someone lives with ASD. A represents someone lives with ASD. B represents that someone does not live with ASD. So A is a complement of B or B is a complement of A in this instance. Which of the following statement is correct? So, number one, it says the probability of A and B is the same as the probability of A times the probability of B. Is that statement correct? No. Why? Yes. That that one who said no, why are you saying it's not correct? It looks like you you're adding them together. And you need to be adding them together. But here we're looking for the joint probability of A and B, where they both meet. So is A uh, here, when you answer this question, you need to ask yourself the following. Is A and B independent? They are not equal, though. No. The question is not saying, are they equal? Is A and B equal? The question here is, is A and B independent? And because if they are independent, then this statement will be correct. Therefore, it means the probability of A given B should be the same as the probability of A. And because we are not given as many information for us to make that decision, we cannot assume statement one is correct at this point. Because how will I know that A and B are independent if I cannot calculate, uh, find the probability that A given B is the same as the probability of A? So we can, at this point, we can leave it as a question mark or we can make a decision based on that. Based on the probability of A given B being the same as the probability of A. So if we look at number, number two, it says the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A, which is the statement that I just said. And the question we need to always ask ourselves is, is event A and B independent? Does event A has any bearing on what happens to event B? That's all what you need to be. Does a person who living with disability have any influence on what the person has or on the person having ASD? A person with ASD, does that person has an influence on what happens to the person who does not have an ASD? That's the question that you need to ask yourself. And since that is not independent, then also B uh, number two as well cannot be correct. The third one, it says the probability of B is not it's not equal to the probability of A complement. Here we have the probability of A and we also have the probability of B and we know that the probability of A is a complement of the probability of B. Therefore, it means uh, a can be the complement of, uh, we can write it as, we can write B as the probability of A complement. 
B is a complement of A. Because A and B mix up the whole sample space. Lizzie? Remember that? Lizzie? Yes? I think that someone is making noise. Now we start to hear you. I'm sorry, I will mute myself. It's the neighbors. <laughs> Okay, remember, we have A and B, they all make up the sample space. So, and I said the probability of a, event A is a complement of event B, because the sum of all makes the sample space. So, event B is a complement of event A. So, we can also write it as the same as B is the complement of A, but B is not equal to A but it's, it, it's a complement of A. So we can write the complement of A as A to the power of C. Remember when we were doing the complement, I said, uh, we can write the complement with a C at the top, or we can write the complement with a gap E. And we know that the sum of the probability of A plus the probability of B should be equals to what? Which is the same as the probability of A plus the complement, which is B, which is A complement, will be the same as 1. We can write B as A complement because B is the complement of A. And here it says it's not, so it also means that is not correct. So we know that all those three statements are incorrect. Because A is not independent of B and B is not independent of A and this statement cannot be true. And we know that B is the complement of A, so this statement says they are not, so we cannot assume that. I'm going to jump all of them and go to five. Based on those three uh, based on those two statements at the top that I said they are not correct, therefore it means even A and B are not independent. Is event A and B mutually exclusive? Yes, they are mutually exclusive because someone lives living with ASD cannot be also living without ASD. You can either be one or the other. Therefore, only option four is the correct one. You cannot be living with ASD and not be living with ASD. So you have to be one or the other. Your coin cannot be a head and a tail at the same time. It can only be one or the other. It can only land on one or the other. Either it lands on the head or it lands on a tail. It can never have two on one. The same, you can never be living with ASD and not be living with ASD. So you are A and B in this instance, they are mutually exclusive. And that's how you answer the questions. You're going to have to interrogate your understanding of everything that you've learned in the basic psychology or in the basic probability. I know why I keep on saying psychology because we're talking about psychiatrists and all that. Okay. Let's look at another example. We only have seven minutes left. So let A represent that someone lives with disability or ASD and B represent that someone does not live with ASD. Suppose that <coughs> the probability of A is 0 0.96 and the probability of B is equals to 0 0.04. Find the probability of A or B. Remember what we discussed previously there. Ne? You need to take that into consideration when you answer this question. So you have the probability of A or B as your formula, and we know that that is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Answer the question. The answer is three.
Why is the answer three? The probability of A? Uh, the probability of A is 0 0.96. And the probability, probability of A is 0 0.04. And A or B is zero because they cannot zero have Because they are mutually exclusive events. And therefore, the probability of A plus the probability of B is equal to one. So if we didn't do exercise seven before, you will still, when you come to this question and answer this question, you will still need to ask yourself the same question. Is A and B mutually exclusive? Am I able to calculate the probability of A plus the probability of B? Oh, the probability of A and B. You cannot from the statement that they have given you as well. Okay, let's see if we can uh, in the next four minutes, fit in another long question. Which one of the following statement is incorrect with regards to the probabilities? If an event has a probability of 0 0.25, then that event has a 25% chance of occurring. Is that statement correct? Yes. yes. That statement is correct because they just take that and convert it into proportions. Number two, a probability is a chance of an event not occurring. That doesn't sound right. False. <laughs> that is incorrect. That is incorrect. When two events are mutually, no, sorry. Yes, that is incorrect. When two events are mutually exclusive, they cannot occur together. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Yes, that is correct. When two events are independent, they can occur together, but they do not influence each other. Actually, number two is correct. Remember, it's a chance of an event happening or not happening because probability either an event can happen or an event cannot happen. So if an event cannot happen if if it's an uncertain event which cannot not happen we call that an uncertain event which has a probability of zero and if an event is happening then that we call it a certain event and it can have a probability of one so this question is asking so this one this next one it says when two events are independent oh no oh no Oh no, I am lying to you actually. This is not correct because probability is a chance of an event happening. So you know, whether it's not happening or not happening, but it's a, a chance of an event happening. This next question is asking, when two events are independent, they can occur together, but they do not influence each other. That is correct because two events can happen together and not have an influence on the other and we say they are independent. So remember when we do the probability of A and B, those two events are happening at the same time, but we know that the probability of the joint event, we know that B has no bearing on what happens to A because we know that we replace that probability of A with the original conditional probability as we know it, it would have been the probability of A and B will be given by the probability, oh sorry, 
will be given by the probability of A given B times the probability of B. Since B does not have any bearing on A, does not influence A, therefore for independence we say the probability of A times the probability of B. But they can still happen at the same time. And that is independent event. So this statement is correct. Statement number five, it says, the intersections of two events, A and B, is denoted by A and B. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And that is correct. So, likewise, you have activities 10 up until, I think, 20. So, uh, 10 up until 19. You can work through them. If you have any questions, you can ask on WhatsApp or on my UNISA or even here on MST. So there are plenty of activities that you can do to get used to before you start answering your uh, assignment questions. And with that, it is two o'clock. And that tells me it's time to recap and check in and close the session. Thank you for being part of the discussions today. If you have any question or comment, feel free to ask now. So you have from question number 11 up until question number 19 to do on your own and ask if you have any challenges. Um, Otherwise, then I will see you on Wednesday when we do uh, study unit five, which is discrete probabilities, which also we 